Today we're going to change out the original clutch on our Barn Fine Black Beauty um, 1984 Porsche 944 with 87,000 original miles. And there's a whole lot to do on that job, so let's get started. This is our gorgeous 1984-944 that we made the decision to change the 36-year-old clutch. These original early clutches were made of rubber and oftentimes would disintegrate and leave the driver stranded. We'll be doing a clutch pressure plate throw out bearing, otherwise known as a clutch release bearing, a pilot bearing, and a rear main seal. And before doing anything else, just disconnect the battery. The starter wires are live and we don't want to forget that down the road. So we'll start by removing the exhaust in just one piece. It's a bit awkward, but it managed to prop it up and take it off without damage. It's easier with a helper. Disconnect the O2 sensor and uh, also the emission test pipe if your car has one of those. And you can plug that test pipe off if it's easier or they don't use them any longer. Disconnect the exhaust at the header. Support the exhaust and disconnect the middle hangers. And then finally the rear hanger. It just drops straight down. Notice that I did the axles first. There are a lot of different things to disconnect and many times the order really doesn't matter. And sometimes it does matter, it just makes things easier. Then you disconnect the coupler from the trans to the torque tube that runs down the middle of the car. There are two six millimeter Allen bolts that you can reach through these access holes. You'll have to spin the engine 180 degrees to get to the second bolt and then the bolts completely removed. Push the coupler towards the transaxle until you see a gap between the input shaft and the drive shaft. Next up is the shift rod. It's on the driver's top side of the transaxle. It's a single 13 millimeter bolt that usually has a safety wire to keep it from loosening. Pull back the boot. Clip the wire, remove the bolt, and then slide the rod off of that shift lever at the trans. Then we'll move inside and remove the gear shift lever. Pull back the carpet, gently pull on the bottom of the leather boot, and lift it up and over the lip. And with that off, do the same for the rubber inner boot. Then you remove the clip holding the front part of the shift rod to the pin on the shifter. And then with a long extension and 13 millimeter socket, remove the, these two bolts that hold the shifter into the torque tube. And then turn the shift rod 90 degrees to the left and push it forward underneath the lip where the foam is. It will take some effort to move the foam out of the way and will likely tear it a bit, just like it did for me. It's just what happens. Then we're done inside, so let's go back to the transmission. We'll disconnect two spade wires that are on top of the transmission on the passenger side that connect the backup light. And also some cars have a speedometer connection to deal with. My speedometer is in the front of the car. So now we're ready to disconnect the four transaxle to torque tube bolts. You can also break free the 17 millimeter trans mount bolts, one on each side but don't remove them just yet. Later cars use a th two 13 millimeter bolts right on top of the transmission. Then get a trans jack underneath the trans to support it. Floor jacks work, but you'll need to be extra skilled or have a helper. Now you can remove the 17 millimeter bolts and begin dropping the trans down. Be careful with the shift rod and the plastic tube. Push them forward as you begin to lower once you clear the spare tire well, you can begin pulling the trans rearward and clear the shift rod in the tube. Well, with the transmission out, we'll move back towards the front. Remove the starter. You did already disconnect the battery, right? And if you didn't, you're going to find out real soon. And then you can also pull the slave cylinder off as well. Just remove the mounting bolts, leave it hanging. 
Just be careful not to damage the line. There's also an exhaust shield that can come off and it's four eight millimeter bolts and it'll just allow the torque tube to slide back. I also loosened up the middle exhaust hanger so it would slide and allow the torque tube to slide back far enough. Now on the torque tube we're going to remove four 17 millimeter bolts that hold the torque tube to the bell housing and then push it back as far as you can. Some people have to turn it 180 degrees to get it to, to go back far enough, but I didn't have to do that. Okay, going back towards the top. This time we're gonna remove the speed and reference sensor on the top of the bell housing. I'll show you a trick later on and make this easier the next time. For now we'll remove the sensors from the bracket held with a 10 millimeter bolt each and then remove the bracket from the bell housing held with two 6 millimeter Allen bolts. And while you're on top, remove the top bell housing bolt. It's a 19 millimeter bolt. You might be able to get the second top bolt and, or at least break it free and then remove it from the bottom using a long extension and a swivel socket. Leave the bottom bell housing bolts in place for now. Also, while you're on the top, disconnect the ground connection at the top of the bell housing. There are two grounds that, are, that connect there, one from the main harness and one from the braided ground wire that runs to the firewall. So moving back underneath, in order for the bell housing to be removed, the clutch pivot pin needs to be removed. Start by loosening the lock nut on the bolt then remove the bolt that holds the pin. Now the pin is likely stuck. You're going to need a long bolt that fits on the end of the end of the pin. And some people have been able to clamp a vice grip to the end of that bolt and pull or hammer it out. But most of us are going to have to take a slide hammer. Try and get some lubricant in there somehow before you start. For me it was quite stuck. I have a big slide hammer and it took many slides to get it to come out. But it did. Then with a pin out, pull the clutch arm out and away from behind the throw out bearing. Now I forgot this step and it made the bell housing very difficult to remove. Finally it just moved away on its own. Now you can remove the rest of the bell housing bolts. There are to four total. Finally, we have gotten to the clutch. It's a six millimeter Allen to remove the nine bolts that hold the pressure plate. It's heavy, so be prepared to catch it and the clutch disc as you remove the last bolts. Our clutch was original and surprisingly still in great shape. We'll be updating this to the industry standard spring-centered clutch used on the later models. Then for the pilot bearing, I used the slide hammer using one of the two arms. And with just a tiny bit of grinding, the arm fit in and behind the bearing. Then just a couple of whacks and it pulled it right back out of the back of the crank. So as I was working, I noticed some seeping at the rear main seal. So I pulled the flywheel off using the couple of bolts to lock the pry bar in there and keep it from turning. It uses triple square I think it's 13 millimeter, maybe 12. It's the same as the axle bolts use. Well, using a screwdriver and a hammer and a notch from the housing and a couple of wax, I was able to pry the old seal out. I took some time and cleaned the mating surfaces carefully. And then again carefully, I tapped the new seal in place. Then you put the flywheel back on and torque it into place. We'll need to install the, the new throwout bearing onto the pressure plate. Start with the three washers on the throwout bearing and then the spring washer. Put it in the pressure plate and kneel down applying pressure to the springs as shown. Then install the thick washer with a notch for the retaining spring. Using the right tool, not pliers, clip it into place and it should lock into the notch on the thick washer.
So then we have to swap the ring gears. This looks difficult, but it's really easy. Apply just a little bit of heat to expand the ring and tap it off the old pressure plate. I know most ring gears on the flywheel. Pay attention to which side is facing out. And then grab the new pressure plate and line up the protruding bolts on the pressure plate to the slots in the ring gear. Add in a couple of mounting bolts to line up the holes and then tap it back on. As it cools, it will get tighter and mounting it to the flywheel will lock it down. Using brake parts cleaner, clean the flywheel pressure plate and if needed, the clutch disc. Before you start, put a small amount of grease in the pilot bearing. Using a clutch centering tool, install the clutch disc with the thicker part facing the pressure plate. It won't go on the other way. Tighten the bolts in an alternating fashion a bit at a time. And then torque the pressure plate to 18 foot-pounds. And remove the centering tool. Okay, it's controversy time. On all my cars, I cut a speed sensor notch to make it a simple process to remove and install the bell housing. Yes, this is frowned upon by the powers that be, but I know lots of people that do this without issues, and I started doing this 20 years ago without issues. Now, your mileage may vary. I'm not recommending this. You'll ruin your car, your wife will leave you, your kids will hate you, and the government will come knocking on your door. That said, it's really easy to do. It takes about two minutes. You clean up the sharp edges. I mean... I'll clean up the sharp edges. Did I mention that I certainly don't recommend you doing this? Since we're doing the bell housing mod, we can set the speed and reference sensor height with the bell housing off. Install the sensors into the bracket using the special 10 millimeter bolts. And then using two 6 millimeter bolts, mount the bracket to the block, leaving it just slightly loose. Take a feeler gauge and set the spacing between the speed sensor and the starter gears. It's 0.8 millimeters, if I recall correctly. Tighten it down and recheck. Okay, bell housing time. We cleaned it up really good. And then check the bearing glide tube for excessive wear and lube that. Check and clean the clutch fork bearings. Then lube up those as well. And then and also the fingers and the socket where the slave cylinder presses in. And don't get too sloppy with the grease. Now we can install the bell housing. Since the speed and reference sensors are set to the proper height, the slot will make installing the bell housing a breeze. Put the clutch arm into place and pull it out a bit away from the throwout bearing. It should protrude just a bit out of the hole next to where the slave cylinder mounts. And then fit it up there and start a bolt or two. And then slide the clutch arm up and into the throwout bearing. Then you can slide the pivot pin up and into place as you wiggle the clutch arm. Now you remembered to clean and lube the pin and the surfaces, right? It should go in easily. With the pin in place, add the locking bolt and then the actual locking nut. And then you can install the rest of the bell housing bolts. When you're doing that top bolt, remember to attach the two grounds at that bolt at the top of the bell housing. And then torque everything down. Hey, the speed sensors are already done. Before mounting the starter and the slave cylinder, you need to attach the torque tube. Pull the torque tube forward. It should slide into place easily since you used a centering tool. You did use a tool, right? Did you remove it? Well, when it slid into place, install the four mounting bolts and torque them down. Now you can install the slave cylinder and also the starter. And then also the exhaust shield. Move the center exhaust bracket back into position in preparation of the install later. If you took the shift rod out, make sure you put it back, as well as the plastic tube. 
Now you are ready to install the transaxle. So lift it up into place. It will take some wiggling and grunting to get it up there while holding the plastic tube in place, but it will fit. It came out of there after all. Install the trans to torque tube bolts. There are three 19 millimeter and three and one 17 millimeter. And then tighten down the two mounting bolts, the 17 millimeters for me. Slide the shift rod back and over the shifter on the trans. Install the special cone shaped 13 millimeter bolt loosely until it locks into the spot on the shifter. Tighten it down and install the safety wire to keep it from backing out. Pull the rubber boot over the connection. Moving inside, install the gear shifter using two 13 millimeter bolts that screws straight down into the torque tube. And with those tight, slide the shift rod up over the stud on the shifter and secure with a C-clip. Put the foam back into place as best you can. Install the rubber shifter boot by gently pulling it over the inner lip. And install the leather boot by gently pulling it over the outer lip. And replace the carpet. Moving back to the trans, install the axles. I usually install them in the top, rotating the tires each time. This gets the rubber boots away from the tool. While you're in there, connect the two backup light spade connectors on the passenger upper part of the transmission. Line up this bolt so that it goes right into that hole. And then the bolt goes into that slot so that you have to take the bolt completely out in order to make it. You see how it's just kind of getting right where it needs to be. And i got to go a little further because it's got to get on that slot. You can see it's not quite on the slot yet. Now it's gone too far. Alright, so push it back a little bit. That looks pretty close. Let's see if that bolt will go in there. Cool for it. So we got the front one tightened, and we're going to spin the extension. It's just a tiny bit off. Finally, we're back where we started with only the exhaust left to do. But wait, we have a tradition that any time the exhaust is off and the engine runs, it gets a startup. It's a fun tradition. Well, I use my trans jack to lift the exhaust into place as well as a high lift tripod. You can use jack stands and a helper if that works for you. The front gaskets, I marked their position carefully as I removed them, installing them back in exactly the same spot. Connect the hangers and make sure that they are tight to the torque tube, and you're good to go. You did it! Well, if you stayed this long, I applaud you, or you have a big job ahead of you. Just remember, it's a lot of little jobs. And there's a lot of help out there. Check out the links below for additional resources. Knowledge is a good thing. Well, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.